If you can't trust your own memories, what else could you possibly trust? Hello everybody, I'm Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-3211. There is no canon. Before I begin, I want to urge everyone here to give this article a read before or right after you watch the video and comment on your thoughts. Who knows, maybe your experience will be different from mine. As always, the link to the article is in the description of this video. With that out of the way, let's begin. Info Hazard Warning The information contained within the following document is subject to an anomalous effect. The effect is activated by receipt of any direct information regarding SCP-3211, including details of the anomalous effect itself. As a result, in order to be effective, this warning message may contain no such details. Do not view this file without express permission from a member of Class 4 personnel assigned to SCP-3211. By proceeding to view this file, you acknowledge and accept that you are about to be exposed to an anomalous effect. Level 4, 3211 Authorization Required Proceed. You have six minutes to read this file. Item Number SCP-3211 Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures To reduce unnecessary exposure to SCP-3211, a warning message is to be placed at the start of this file. Level 4 authorization must be required to proceed. No information regarding SCP-3211 is to be present in any resources not exclusively available to researchers assigned to SCP-3211, including the warning message. Except in the event of an emergency necessitating knowledge of SCP-3211, no more than three members of the O5 Council and 10% of the population of any individual site are to have been exposed to information regarding SCP-3211 other than its existence. SCP-3211 is to be kept in a standard non-humanoid containment chamber. Access is to be limited to tests only. Description SCP-3211 does not exist. The room that either contains or contained SCP-3211 is empty. Upon entering the containment chamber, all observers will immediately be confident that the cell previously contained a demi culverin military cannon, constructed of iron and oak in France in 1575, and used in the Battle of Fordsworth and spending its remaining days in the British Museum. Observers will consider this to be completely normal and return to their regular business, which may result in them walking into and out of the cell repeatedly, which is also considered normal. These actions and the false memory are only realized to be anomalous when the observer notices or is informed that the Battle of Fordsworth does not exist and that SCP-3211 is in Site-21 rather than the British Museum. SCP-3211 exhibits a slow-acting but potent perception-altering effect. During the first six minutes of exposure to SCP-3211, subjects are able to observe and record SCP-3211 without issue. Once six minutes have passed, subjects will immediately and permanently be unable to perceive any direct information associated with SCP-3211 or observe SCP-3211 itself. For the purposes of this document, subjects who have already been exposed to SCP-3211 for at least six minutes will be described as post-3211, and those who have been exposed to it for less than six minutes will be described as pre-3211. Post-3211 subjects are consistently able to recall, without issue, that SCP-3211 is an empty room. However, only pre-3211 subjects are able to perceive SCP-3211 itself or record new information about it. Of note is that descriptions of the object vary between post-3211 subjects. All pre-3211 subjects agree that SCP-3211 is a room that may or may not have contained a cannon. However, once these subjects pass the six-minute threshold, they will disagree on what it is. This also applies to documentation. Personnel viewing this document may report that it describes something else after it changes after six minutes of exposure. See Experiment Logs 3211B and D for more details. The mechanism through which SCP-3211 propagates this effect is currently unknown. Amnestics have proven to be effective on post-3211 subjects, 
They will forget SCP-3211 as expected, and upon re-exposure will be able to perceive it for an additional 6 minutes. Addendum 3211-A Experiment Logs 3211-B and 3211-D Experiment Log 3211-01 the purpose of this experiment was to establish a first-hand written description of SCP-3211 and then compare this description with another observer. D-68-134 was given a pencil, clipboard, and a single sheet of paper. He was instructed to enter the containment cell and produce a written description of its contents. Ten seconds into the recording, D-68-134 enters the containment chamber with his eyes closed. D-68-134 is then instructed to open his eyes, and at this point, a six-minute timer begins. After eight seconds, D-68-134 begins writing a description of SCP-3211. After six minutes and four seconds, D-68-134 expresses surprise that he can no longer perceive SCP-3211. He expresses anger at not being able to read what he has written. After 6 minutes and 25 seconds, D-68-134 is instructed to leave the containment chamber. The description produced by D-68-134 was retained as Document 3211-01. Experiment Log 3211-02 The purpose of this experiment was to compare the written description from Experiment 3211-01 with another observer. D-8834 is provided with document 3211-01 and instructed not to read it. D-8834 enters the containment chamber with her eyes closed. D-8834 is then instructed to open her eyes and compare the object in the room to the description on document 3211-01. At this point, another 6-minute timer starts. 1 minute 18 seconds in. D-8834 confirms that the SCP-3211 matches the written description. 5 minutes and 45 seconds in, D-8834 is asked to close her eyes. 6 minutes and 15 seconds in, D-8834 is asked to compare the object to the written description again from memory. 6 minutes and 34 seconds in, D-8834 confirms that document 3211-01 still describes SCP-3211. 6 minutes and 44 seconds in, D-8834 is asked to open her eyes. She reports that she is neither able to perceive the object nor read document 3211-01. The following is a transcription of document 3211-01, the text produced by D-68-134 during experiment 3211-01. There is no canon. Addendum 3211-B Empirical Data a collection of data has been recorded from SCP-3211 and is listed as follows. This data has been recorded only by pre-3211 researchers. Note that it is currently unknown why this data is considered important enough to retain on file. Data type, Full Spectrum Spectrophotometry. Observation not available. Data type, Mass. Observation not available. Data type, Hume Measurement. Observation not available. Data type, magnetism. Observation not available. Data type, visual observation by D-9981. Observation, the containment chamber is empty. Data type, physical observation by D-9981. Observation, SCP-3211 does not exist. Data type, response to basic questioning by D-9981. Observation, no response. D-9981 remarked, how rude. Relevance uncertain. And lastly, data type, type kappa memetic sentience detector. Observation, negative response. Incident log 3211-C. On March 31st, 2016, a researcher who was not assigned to SCP-3211, Dr. Jason Greaves, took a Class Y amnestic without authorization and entered the containment chamber. Amnestics, as opposed to the more common amnestics, generally aid in the retention of memories and the prevention of their modification, even in the face of anomalies that seek to disrupt this. Dr. Greaves recorded a series of audio logs detailing his thought process during his encounter all of which have been transcribed for posterity. Dr. Greaves is available for questioning regarding his experience with SCP-3211. 
Audio Log 321101 Dr. Jason Greaves, SCP-3211, Experiment Log 1. If you're hearing this and if, like me, you're souped up on some heavy amnestics, then you and me both know for sure that SCP-3211 is an empty room. Why it's trying so hard to hide that from us, we'll never know. But if you're not high as heck on Class Y, then in less than six minutes, you'll only remember me just rambling on about some random thing sat in a containment chamber. And of course, when that happens, all these logs will say is that there's nothing in the containment chamber at all. What I'm trying to do is work out exactly what SCP-3211 is, how it works, and why it's trying so hard to hide. What does it want? No matter what I tried and who I spoke to, I couldn't get this test authorized. But it needs to be done. So I've taken a small dose of Class Y amnestics, and I'm doing this myself. I only have a couple of hours before the Class Y stops helping me remember things and starts making me forget things, so I'd better get started. I've noticed something of a pattern emerging. Most people who walk into 3211's cell will perceive it as something totally new, like I see it as an empty room, and there's no one else on the list who's perceived it as that. But there was a cannon here, or so it wants you to think. It's not just an empty room. It has anomalous properties other than the fact that people can't see it for more than six minutes and then their memories after that are wrong. It seems to me like Foundation personnel, researchers and the like, will perceive it as something anomalous. People who are already familiar with the anomalous, who are expecting it to be anomalous, will remember it as being something anomalous. But a Class D, for example, who is not familiar with the anomalous, will remember it as being something mundane, like a clay vase. It looks like it adapts to match the viewer's expectation, but I still don't understand why an empty room is going to such lengths to protect itself in the first place. My head feels... foggy. I don't know if it's the SCP or the Mnestic starting to wear off. I actually don't know how long Class Y lasts. I think I've narrowed it down to three... stages. That seems to be the right word. So, the first stage is what you see when you walk into the cell for the first time. What SCP-3211 really is. It's an empty room. Obviously, as soon as my Mnestics wear off, I'll forget that. And so will you. I assume you've taken Mnestics. The second stage is whatever memory SCP-3211 injects over itself when you've seen it for more than six minutes. Last time I saw it, I remember seeing my son, who would be six. That was the second stage for me. The third stage is that you can't perceive it at all. Its disguise is complete and it's hidden from you. I think I know why it wants to hide. I just need to put the words into a sentence. It's getting hard to think. My thoughts feel like walking through ketchup. Oh god, my head is killing me. I'm certain it's the Nestics. Class Z literally kills you when you take it because the effect is permanent. Class Y won't kill you, I hope. I, uh, might have majorly screwed up by doing this. It's really weird seeing all the things you can't usually remember. There's bugs everywhere covering every surface. They're crawling all over it, too. I need to sleep. I just want to sleep. The floor is so much more comfortable than standing. It's getting hard to breathe. I don't know if that's my lungs closing up, or if it's just the... If it's just me forgetting how. At least I haven't forgotten what it was the first time I saw it. But I know for sure why SCP-3211 wants to disguise so avidly. It's right there, just in front of you. I'm surprised no one has seen it yet. It's just... It's just that it's not really... Really itself, right? I don't know how to take Mnestics. I only make them. I know how they're... How they're... I need to sleep. It's just sat there, watching me. Just, just make me forget already. I know your secrets, dang it. Why don't, why can't, why did you have to show him to me? Why did you have to take him away again? I don't think I'm going to survive.
Why hasn't anyone come to get me? It is assumed that Dr. Greaves fell unconscious at this point. The remainder of the logs are mostly silent, up to the point where a member of security staff noticed Dr. Greaves on closed circuit monitoring several minutes later and called for help. Memetic detectors indicate that you were first exposed to this file more than six minutes ago. You are now considered post-3211. If you can still perceive the documentation as you originally recall it, please consult a researcher assigned to SCP-3211 immediately. Item number SCP-3211 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures To reduce unnecessary exposure to SCP-3211, a warning message is to be placed at the start of this document. Level 4 authorization must be required to proceed. No information regarding SCP-3211 is to be present in any resources not exclusively available to researchers assigned to SCP-3211, including the warning message. Except in the event of an emergency necessitating knowledge of SCP-3211, no more than three members of the O5 Council and 10% of the population of any individual site are to have been exposed to information regarding SCP-3211 other than its existence. SCP-3211 is to be kept in a standard, non-humanoid containment chamber. Access is to be limited to tests only. Description: SCP-3211 is an unknown object, entity, or concept. SCP-3211 exhibits a slow-acting but potent perception-altering effect. During the first six minutes of exposure to SCP-3211, subjects are able to observe and record SCP-3211 without issue. Once six minutes have passed, subjects will immediately and permanently be unable to perceive any direct information associated with SCP-3211, or observe SCP-3211 itself. This effectively quarantines information about SCP-3211 to only those who have been exposed to it for less than six minutes. For the purposes of this file, subjects who have already been exposed to SCP-3211 for at least six minutes will be described as post-3211, and those who have been exposed to it for less than six minutes will be described as pre-3211. Post-3211 subjects are consistently adamant that they are able to perfectly remember its nature despite being unable to take in new information about it. However, it quickly becomes apparent that each post-3211 subject reports a different description for SCP-3211. A selection of such descriptions in chronological order of their being reported is provided here. Brand Microwave Oven Homo sapiens Czech female Named Narrow zooming. Porcelain mug printed with imagery from <laughs> franchise. Empty. Red cube. Perfectly smooth. 12 centimeters on all sides. Columba livia domestica, or common pigeon corpse in suspended decomposition. The color puce. Clay vase, presumably ancient. DVD box set of the television series Friends, missing a disc from season 3. A small plastic badge imprinted with the number 3211. Of note is that descriptions of the object vary between post-3211 subjects. Observations indicate that pre-3211 subjects consistently agree on the nature of SCP-3211. However, once these subjects pass the six-minute threshold, they will disagree on what it is. This also applies to documentation. Personnel viewing this file universally report that it describes something else before it changes after six minutes of exposure. See Experiment Logs 3211B and D for more details. Note that post-3211 subjects reporting unique descriptions is not universal. In several cases, the same description has been reported more than once. The fact that those who have been exposed to SCP-3211 are able to understand the previous list suggests that none of those descriptions are what SCP-3211 truly is. Several theories have been suggested. First, that none of the descriptions are true and that the real SCP-3211 has yet to be seen. Second, that none of the descriptions are true and that the real SCP-3211 will reveal itself to someone worthy. Third, that one of the above descriptions is true and the rest are false. And fourth, that all of the above descriptions are true 
and that SCP-3211 is somehow several objects located in the same conceptual space. The mechanism through which SCP-3211 propagates this effect is currently unknown, though the current theory poses that after the 6 minute threshold, SCP-3211 injects false memories over the original perception. Amnestics have proven to be effective on post-3211 subjects. They will forget SCP-3211 as expected and upon re-exposure may perceive it as something new. A method of amnesticating only the false memories has not yet been found. Addendum 3211-A Experiment Logs 3211-B and 3211-D Experiment Log 3211-01 This experiment consists of D-68-134 entering the containment chamber and writing down a description of SCP-3211 before six minutes pass and he forgets what it is. The description produced was retained as document 32101. Experiment Log 32102. This experiment consists of D-8834 entering the containment chamber and confirming that the written description by the previous D-Class matches what this D-Class currently sees. Before six minutes had passed, D-8834 confirmed that the SCP-3211 matches the written description. After six minutes passed, D-8834 confirmed that document 32101 describes a completely different object to SCP-3211. The following is a transcription of document 32101, the text produced by D-68134 during experiment 32101. The containment chamber is empty. There is nothing to describe. I don't understand why I have to write about an empty room. Addendum 3211-B Empirical Data As an attempt to determine the true nature of SCP-3211, a collection of data has been recorded from SCP-3211 and is listed as follows. This data has been recorded only by pre-3211 researchers. It is currently unknown whether the readings are accurate, or if the reader perceives them to match their current perception of SCP-3211. Data Type Full Spectrum Spectrophotometry Observation SCP-3211 displays absorbances and transmittances in the visible spectrum consistent with standard background readings. Data type Mass Observation Mass balance placed underneath the location of SCP-3211 did not detect any weight. Data type Hume measurement Observation SCP-3211 has a Hume reading consistent with baseline reality. Data type Magnetism Observation, SCP-3211 is not magnetic. Data type, Visual Observation by D-9981. Observation, SCP-3211 is not visually present. Data type, Physical Observation by D-9981. Observation, No Response. D-9981 felt nothing at SCP-3211's location. Data type, Response to Basic Questioning by D-9981. Observation, no response. And lastly, data type, Kappa Mimetic Sentience Detector. Observation, negative response. Incident Log 3211C On March 31st, 2016, a researcher who was not assigned to SCP-3211, Dr. Jason Greaves, took a Class Y amnestic without authorization and entered the containment chamber. Personnel reported being unable to perceive Dr. Greaves until his unconscious body spontaneously appeared several hours later. Dr. Greaves returned to full health with medical care, but did not retain any details of his encounter with SCP-3211, claiming only that he, quote, wasted his time in an empty cell. Dr. Greaves recorded a series of audio logs detailing his thought process during his encounter. However, the content of these logs propagate the infohazardous effect and are effectively devoid of information. Their transcriptions have only been preserved for posterity. Dr. Greaves was severely reprimanded for not following standard testing procedure. The contents of audio log 32101 consist of Dr. Jason Greaves entering SCP-3211's containment chamber after taking several amnestics in an attempt to retain his memory. Upon entering the cell, he discovered that it was completely empty and that SCP-3211 does not exist. In his research, he discovered that most people who enter the containment cell will also perceive it to be completely empty. 
He theorized that Foundation personnel, such as researchers who are already familiar with the anomalous, will perceive the cell as completely empty, because people who are already familiar with nothing, who are expecting nothing, will see nothing in the containment chamber, because it is empty. He also discovered that D-Class, or anyone unfamiliar with the anomalous, will perceive the cell as being empty just the same. Despite all observations pointing to SCP-3211 not existing, the doctor still feels the need to prove that it does. Over time, he begins to suffer from severe side effects from the Nestics. For instance, he began to see bugs everywhere because he remembered there being bugs everywhere. But then he realized that the containment cell is empty. There are no bugs. As Dr. Greaves sits alone in the containment chamber with something that does not exist, he begins to forget how to take Nestics and even struggles to remember how to breathe. He knows that it does not exist, but he still asks why he was shown to him. After questioning why no one has come to get him, he falls unconscious, until someone from the security staff notices his body on the monitoring system several minutes later and calls for help. Thanks for listening. If you like that video, maybe you'll like this one too. Have a nice day.